Bite indication in winter is vitally important to me because the fish aren't as active in the colder months as what they are in spring, summer and autumn. So you don't always get those ripping takes. It's, it can still happen, but quite a lot of the time the takes can be quite finicky and it might just be the case of a, a bobbin just tightening up slowly and staying tight. Now if you're already fishing tight up, there's nowhere for that fish to go. Even if you've got it in a line clip, it might not pull out the line clip. So bite indication in winter is, 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 is quite vital. So I always think, I mean, fishing quite close in at the minute. I mean, this, this right-hand rod's only about 20 yards out down there. That's about 25 yards there. And this one's just, just down, not too far out either. So I'm fishing fairly slack, uh, just, to, just to keep the, the line down on the deck so it, it doesn't spook the fish and alert the fish of my presence. But I like to fish just in touch. So as you can see, the bobbin's not on the floor. It's actually suspended slightly. So even if the fish comes towards me, that will still drop back and I know something's happened. Uh, but it's still quite slack with a very, very light bobbin on at the minute, which is, which is how I like to fish. So it's super, super sensitive. Um, so any sort of movement at all, and that bobbin should move and give me some idea that something's happening. Now that goes for bites, but also in winter when the fish aren't showing as much and you don't really know where, where the location of the fish are, a line bite can be quite important as well. Because if you're getting line bites, it shows fish are in the area. Now it might not always be a carp, but it could well be. And if you're doing a campaign on the water and trying to work out where the fish are holding in certain conditions, if you're getting line bites in, in say sunny weather or, or overcast conditions or whatever else, you know that the fish are in that swim at that certain period of time. You know, you can spend hours and hours looking at the water and not see a single, single fish bosh. But if you're getting a line bite, you know something's about. So it's not just the bites themselves are important, it's the line bites and telling you what's in the swim. Now, I like to set my alarms as sensitively as possible for these sort of conditions because, you know, like I say, line bites are important and so are the bites themselves being really, really finicky. So these alarms come with a sensitivity button. So one beep is low sensitivity. That's probably how I'd fish it in, in the summer when there's a, there's, there's a big old wind on. There's a lot of water movement, weeds moving around and I don't want too many false beeps. Two is a little bit more sensitive. Three is a good setting for your sort of average breezy conditions in the summer. But in the winter, I like to set it on high sensitivity, which is four. So that bobbin's not going to move far in either direction for the alarm to sound. So I know everything that's going on. And sometimes just a few beeps and slow pickup like that is enough to alert your attention and get you close to the rods before the actual take itself happens. And that can be vitally important because a lot of the time I am fishing bolt rigs, but they don't always hook themselves when they're moving so, so slowly. So just a little bit of indication where you're sure a fish is on can be enough to convert a, an aborted take into a fish on the bank. Now I'm just on a short day session today, so I'm never gonna to be too far away from my rods and there's no bivvy to go in. It's, it's, it's not raining, so I've not even set a brolly up. So I'm just on a chair, trying to stay mobile, trying to stay on fish. Um, so the receiver's probably not that important in that situation, but when I'm bivvied up, especially if the conditions are terrible, um, a receiver is, is, is vitally important in the bivvy. Not just to know if you've got beeps, but it's, it's important I know straight away, even when I'm asleep, which rod's going. Because one rod might be in open water fishing semi-slack line, where another rod might be snag fishing because a, a fish in winter spend a lot of time near snags. So I'll often set different colours and different uh, tones for the rod that's next to the snag compared to the rod that's, that's out in open water. So if it's, if it's a breezy night and you're getting one or two false line bites in open water or false beeps in open water due to weed and drift and whatever else, then there's no point in jumping out of bed for those all the time. But if I get one beep on a snag rod, then I want to know about it because that could indicate a bite to me. You know, there could be a fish on the end just keeping everything tightening up. So I like to adjust the tone and the colour of the LED to, to, so I know that uh, if that rod goes off in the night, so say I see a blue light light up in the night with a low tone on, then that rod is next to the snags, whereas the other two rods could be in open water with a high tone on, and I know it's not vitally important that I inspect every beep. And it's good with these alarms because you can adjust the tone of each alarm individually, and you can adjust the colour of each LED. And as soon as you adjust anything on here, it automatically adjusts on the receiver as well. So if I wanted that one blue for danger, that one snag fishing, I just adjust it by pressing the light button until that alarm goes blue, drop the tone, so it's a real low tone, so if I hear a low tone and see a blue light at night, I need to get on that rod very, very quickly. Now in winter, there can be up to 16 hours of darkness, so you're spending a lot of time 
out in the dark. And I do like the night lights on these uh, alarms at the minute because you can see where the each rod is in place. And as soon as you get a bite or a beep on one of the rods, that will automatically cancel out the night lights. So you can you know which rod it is that's, that's giving you that beep without having to get out your bivvy, without having to look for the receiver or, or work out what color LED you've got set on that alarm. So if it's the middle one that goes, these two night lights and the underwheel night light will cancel itself out and just leave the latching LED on, whether that be the coloured one for a forward indication or the white one for a back indication. Now a lot of waters in winter fish predominantly at night and another nice little feature that I've got on this receiver is that when I get four or five beeps in one direction, the light at the bottom lights up, which is a nice dull light just to light up your little swim a little bit, just so you can see your boots, get your boots on and get out as quick as possible. So it's a, just a nice little feature just to make everything a little bit easier when you get that bite. Now I like to have a good idea what's going on all the time with my setup. So if I get four beeps in the night, I like to have a good idea of why I've got those four beeps. And what these alarms do is drop back differential. So, so you get the, the, the forward sound is different to the back sound. So if I get two beeps up and two beeps down, I'll know about that by the different sounds. I know the chances are that's a line bite. But if I was to get four beeps in a forward direction and that holds there, there's a good chance that's a bite and I need to be out on them rods quickly. So one of the things I couldn't do without these days is drop back differential. And with these alarms, it's not just in the sound, it's in the color of the LED. So this rod's set at green at the minute. So the forward LED is green and the back LED is white. So if I hear a few beeps and weren't quite sure if it was a drop back differential or forward differential, I'd have a quick look and see the white light on, then the chances are it was a line bite or it's a drop back. But if I just come out and hear four beeps and see the green light on, that's forward indication. The chances are that's a bite. Now something that I'm not doing today, but I do a lot of in winter, is zig rig fishing. Now a lot of the time the fish are sitting in mid water in, these, in, in the deeper lakes and just going nowhere near the deck. So zig rigs can be vitally important for that. You know, when they're in the upper layers, the mid depths, and they're just cruising around, but not really feeding. Or in the late winter, early spring, when they're hitting the insects as the, as the, as the hatches come off the, off the lake bed and up in the surfaces, zig rig fishing can be really important. And how I like to fish zigs is with a fairly tight line, a heavy bobbin, but I like to get one beep before it hits that locked off spool. And I also fish it in the line clip as well. So I tend to get one beep before it hits the rod and then a beep as it comes out the line clip. So that's two beeps for the zig rig. And that's really important to me because I like to fish the spools locked up tight. So as soon as that fish hits the tightness of the spool, it kind of hooks it off the spool uh, as much as it does the lead. So when you zig rig fishing, there's a really long hook length before it hits the lead. But I like that lead to fall off really quickly. And then the fish and the line hitting the tightness of the spool can often be enough to force the hook home before I pick the rod up. So zig rig fishing is completely different to everything else, but still I like a really, really sensitive alarm because I like to know every beep when you're zigging can be vitally important. Now fishing as sensitive as I can in winter has helped me put quite a few extra carp on the bank. You know, just with those little lifts, just those sensitive little knocks, or just tightening up very, very slightly as, as quite often put a fish on the bank that I probably wouldn't do if I was fishing super slack lines or a tight line where a fish has literally got nowhere to go unless it's ripping line off a spool. So by adjusting the way I fish from the warmer months when the fish are really active to the cooler months where the fish are feeling really finicky and not moving around as much has put quite a few extra fish on the bank for me. And I'll continue to pay a lot more attention to bite indication in winter than what I do in the more warmer months.